Here's the answer for our school exam 2018, question 1A. So we've got a media, media article here about social media and teenagers. And they've given us some information here about users finding how they find they're managing their privacy controls. Um, and we've got some bits of data in here that we might need to use at some stage. Um, then we've also got some more information here about editing and deleting posts and things like that. Then they've given us a graph and we've been told that we've got two surveys. So we've got a 2006 and a 2012. And in 2012, we had 802 teenagers involved between the ages of 12 and 17. Um, and that was done in English and in Spanish on landline and cell phones. In 2006, we have 487 teenagers. Okay, so that's all the information there that might be useful. Let's just have a look at the question. So it says, calculate the margin of error for the 2012 survey and explain why a margin of error should be used when interpreting survey data. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is find our margin of error. And we want that for 2012. So I need to know for 2012 what was my sample size. And that's going back over here. And we've got a sample size there of 802. So I know N is 802. And my formula... So this is just dealing with the 2012. I'm not doing a comparison. I'm just looking at a single group. So that means my formula is 1 over the square root of n. So in this case, my sample size n is 802. So I'm going to put 1 over square root of 802 into the calculator. And that will give me a value of 0 0.0353. Um, that's to four decimal places. Now margin of error, I need to turn into a percentage. So that's going to be turned into 3.53%. Okay, all I did was take that decimal and multiply that by 100 um, to turn it into a percentage. Okay, so that's the first part. Calculate your margin of error. Now the second part says explain why we should use a margin of error. Okay, so this has come back to the big idea about what margins of error are. So... We have a population that we're interested in. And in this case, the population would be all teenagers um, from 12 to 17 in New Zealand. Okay, that would be our entire population. What we're going to do is we, we, they have gone and taken, done a survey and they have sampled 802 teenagers. Okay, so... One of the things that we know about taking a sample or doing a survey is we, when we do another survey, if we do another survey in 2006, 2012, 2014, different years, different times, each survey that I take, they're still trying to estimate the percentage in the, of teenagers in the population that find managing privacy difficult and all those kind of things. But every time I take a sample, I'm going to get a new set of data with a new graph, okay? Um, and because I'm going to get a new set of data every time, there's going to be variation. And so this is the whole idea of sampling variability. And when we take a sample... we are estimating the population. We are estimating the population um, value. Okay. Um, and because we're doing an estimate, we need that margin of error to give us a range of values that it is likely to be between. Okay. So the margin of error... is an estimate of the variation in the population. Or oh, no, sorry, the variation in the survey itself. Okay. So those are the two big ideas. 
So if you're able to calculate the margin of error correctly, so if you're able to get to that 3.5%, then that gets you your U. If you're able to do the margin of error and give an explanation, um, so talking about the fact that proportions are going to vary from sample to sample, somehow in there you've talked about that idea of sampling variability. If you've got both of those two things, then that gets you the merit R.